Good evening to everyone and uh, welcome to today's session pediatrics can we revise pediatrics in about 8 to 9 hours entire pediatrics at the same time without losing the focus so that is a challenge one of the very common questions asked is the definitions of the various forms of birth weight you know that low birth weight is anything which is less than 2500 and uh, we call it as very low birth weight if it is less than 1500 grams and extremely low birth weight whenever it is uh, less than 1000 grams is what we need to basically remember now another common question asked in the exam is how will a baby grow for a period of time typically at the time of the birth most of the babies weigh about 3 kgs and in the length if you take they are about 50 centimeters when will this length and the weight will double triple quadruple is one of the favorite questions of the examiner by the time the baby is about six months he will be doubling the birth weight so three cages become six cages and at that point of time his height would be around 65 centimeters is what we need to understand then when will he be tripling in his birth weight is one of the important questions he will be tripling by the time he touches his first birthday 3 months 3 kg weighing baby become around 9 kg by the time he keeps his initial steps just the walking started independently by his first birthday he will be about 9 kgs where he is tripling and his height would be around 75 centimeters that the height has not yet doubled only 25 centimeters has added up so by 2 years he will be about 12 kgs and 85 centimeters 3 years he is about 95 centimeters and he will be doubling his birth height which is 50 centimeters become 100 centimeters by the time he is around 4 years of age is uh, the precise terms the values the calendar which we need to be very sure which is frequently asked in any exam we go now what is the definition of size for gestation we call it as small for gestation if he is less than 10 percentile of the weight which is expected for the given gestation now one of the common confusions many students will have is what is the difference between SGA small for gestation versus low birth weight a full term baby a full term baby instead of being 3 kgs he if he is only 2 kgs what do you like to call him as small for gestational age but if you have got a, a 30 weeks at the time of 30 weeks less than the full gestation if somebody is born and if he is still 2 kgs then you call it as appropriate to the gestational age so that we need to be very sure and uh, 10th to 90th percentile if the weight is then I mean 10 to 90th percentile of what is expected you call it as appropriate for gestation more than 90th percentile of the expected weight for that given gestational age you call it as large for gestation is what need to be remembered then some simple questions we do mistakes in exam like when do you call embryo when do you call fetus 12 weeks you call it as fetus up to 2 months around 8 weeks you call it as embryo and less than 1 week he is still in the stage of a fertilized egg which is growing towards blastocyst is what need to be understood now you know the starch group of infections which include syphilis toxoplasma HIV rubella cmv and herpes at least four to five points about each of these conditions we need to be very sure classical traditional characteristic uh, points about each of these uh, starch group of infections is one of the most high yield topic we'll come back to the starch shortly but before that there are certain red flag signs in the child development if it doesn't develop by that particular time at least uh, then you need to go to the pediatrician and check whether there is any developmental delay so what are those flag signs red flag signs by two months also if there is no visual fixation normally 
If you take a newborn, he will be looking here and there and here and there. He won't be focusing and looking at a particular object. So it takes at least around less than one month by the time fixation developed by about four to five, six weeks. In spite of two months, if the visual fixation is not developed, then that is the indication for basically going to the pediatrician. Now, uh, one of the important uh, signs is vocalization. We expect a baby to vocalize at least by about six months. If there is no vocalization even by six months, then definitely you need to get the baby evaluated for a developmental delay is another favorite uh, question asked by the examiner. Now, sitting without support, if it doesn't develop beyond what age is another very common question. If he is unable to sit without support by 9 to 10 months also, then you definitely consider something abnormal and always developmental milestones comes only by some amount of observation and a small amount of clinical or a paternal experience. Either your baby or somebody's baby, you must be in a position to observe and learn. Otherwise, we lose some wonderful ranks because of developmental milestones, let me tell you. So, entrance finally is a simple, simple uh, uh, equation. It is not by doing grave mistakes we enter grave. Simple mistakes put us in grave, which I don't want you to have. Now, not standing alone at what age, beyond what age, you call it as a red flag sign is a very important question. Even at around 16 months, if the baby is unable to stand, then you basically consider it as a red flag sign is what I want to underscore to all of you. Generally, most of the kids will be able to put up their initial steps by about 12th month. So, beyond 18 months, one and a half year also, if he is not walking alone, then you basically consider it as a, a abnormal red flag sign, where you need to look for the possibility of a developmental delay is what I want to underscore to all of you. Now, most of the times, the single words are spoken by about... Uh, the first birthday. At around 18 months also, no single words if they are not there. Then every child will be playing an imaginative play. I am the police, you are the thief, or I am the teacher, you are the student kind of games. So the imaginative play, if it is not happening even by about three years, then also you basically consider it as abnormal is what I want to underscore to all of you. So, these red flag signs, hardly five to six signs are there. You need to have one question is definitely going to come, doctor. Now, once more the definitions of various periods of gestation. We call perinatal period from 28th week of gestation or the time of the live birth if less than 24 weeks of gestation up to seven days of postnatal age, you call it as perinatal. There are different reasons for the antenatal, I mean prenatal, perinatal, mortality, etc., etc. The first seven days is called early neonatal, 8 to 28 days is called as late neonatal and the first year is called as infancy. You all know very well. Then doubling of the birth weight which you have already seen is by about 5 months and tripling by 1 year and quadrupling by 2 years. So, 3 years. 3 cages at the birth should become 3 into 4, 12 cages by the time the child is about 2 years is what need to be remembered. Then in the first year from 50 centimeters he is becoming 75, so 25 centimeters he is growing. Second year he will grow 12.5 centimeters. Third year he will be growing 6 to 7 centimeters and fourth year onwards 6 centimeters per year. Unless he is the Sri Mahavishnu of the Vamana where uh, you can expect a little longer uh, length, but this is the common expectation of the height, the growth of the height in the baby is what you should be very sure. Now another very simple question asked is, what are the various causes of IUGR? At the hick of the gasp, you must be able to answer, any chronic renal failure, alcohol, smoking, propranolol, 
which is a beta blocker, any of them can impede the uteroplacental flow and can lead to the development of the IUGR is what need to be remembered. Now, whenever there is an intrauterine growth retardation, there are two terms which we have to be sure, symmetrical and asymmetrical IUGR. If you take a symmetrical IUGR, will the brain get affected? If the brain would have got affected, lot of Indians would have been mentally retarded. Because it is not uncommon to have IUGR. But fortunately, the brain is not involved in the case of the symmetrical IUGR is what we need to basically understand. Now, another very common question is, what are the causes? There are different causes for symmetrical and asymmetrical IUGR. You have to be 100% sure, doctor. Symmetrical means there is an inadequate growth of the head, body, extremities. It occurs in about 25% of IUGR fetuses. And any IUGR with an onset prior to 32 weeks of pregnancy has got a great risk of chromosomal anomalies like Down syndrome, trisomy 13 and 18, and uh, the symmetrical IUGR is very common in this subset of population. If you take asymmetrical IUGR, it typically occurs in the third trimester and there is a impaired growth of the body with a normal growth of the head. That is what typically happens and uh, these kids are typically long and skinny. That's how you typically recognize. Now there are so many hormones, growth hormone, insulin, somatomidine, etc, etc. Out of all, who has the highest influence on the growth of the baby doctor? It is the insulin, which has got the highest amount of uh, influence on the fetus. That's the reason what happens in the case of the maternal diabetes. The maternal hyperglycemia will lead to fetal hyperglycemia, which will stimulate the fetal insulin and that increased insulin will create a macrosomic uh, large baby, typically in the case of uh, the children of uh, the diabetic mother is what need to be remembered. So what is the average job of an obstetrician? You are regularly checking what is the amniotic fluid volume and looking at the flow pattern along the umbilical cord blood vessels etc etc. So amniocentesis, non-stress test and amniotic fluid volume are the various ways by which you evaluate the fetal well-being in the IUGR is what we need to fundamentally appreciate. Then whom do you call small for date babies? As we already discussed, if the weight is below the 10th percentile of the gestational age, whether he is term, preterm or postterm, doesn't matter. If the weight is below the 10th percentile for that given gestational age, you basically call it as small for uh, uh, the dead babies is what need to be understood. Now, there are two scenarios, clinical scenarios here. You have a small for gestational age baby who is full term versus a preterm baby. In both scenario, organ related problems are much more common. Typically, the small for gestational age infant does not have the problems which are related to the various organ systems is uh, what we need to fundamentally appreciate. Now, uh, what are the three major causes which lead to the development of small for gestational age? I think every Sunday mock test, we ask uh, all our true except kind of questions. Some of them are very irritable. Because there are so many, all of all are true about, about so many things in the entire uh, subject. So sometimes one small issue we pick up and put it as an accept about it. But at least you need to have a gross idea. So that's the reason, this year what we thought is next batch of students. Uh, just not uh, only MCQ oriented topic wise discussion, initially let us summarize the subject. So that that gives some amount of confidence to face uh, the MCQs. And then uh, also add the most recent MCQs and NEAT is going to come. So the NEAT pattern of MCQs is going to be the philosophy for our uh, next uh, round of uh, the students. 
So placental insufficiency, placental involution and the infections, the torch group are the three major causes which are responsible for the development of the intrauterine growth retardation is what need to be remembered. Similarly, the maternal addiction of the cocaine and the heavy use of the alcohol are also the two common factors that need to be considered whenever there is a development of intrauterine growth retardation. Now, can we say certain group of babies who are at the risk uh, for certain complications, if at all they are small for date, definitely. They have a higher amount of perinatal asphyxia. Similarly, hypoglycemia is much more common in the small for gestational age. That is, he may be full term. We are not talking about preterm when we say small for gestational age. Full term, but his birth weight is not appropriate to that particular gestational age. That's what we call small for gestational age. They are more prone for hypoglycemia, hypothermia, polycythemia, hyperviscosity, dysmorphology and pulmonary hemorrhage. They are all the complications which are much more common is what I want to underscore to all of you.